Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city. I'm so glad that you have joined us for worship today. If this is your first time, we hope that you will email us and let us know that you are visiting with us and give us your contact information so we can continue to connect with you in ways that it will enrich your life and invite you to be a part of our community of faith. We are truly grateful you've chosen to worship with us today. We are all very excited to have had our first outdoor worship experience. We will be continuing these experiences on Sunday, October the 18th at 4 o'clock. We will have a pre-registration online so that you can avoid a registration table. And all we ask when you come for this service is to come prepared to sing with joy as we welcome our confirmation class for this year. As we gather, bring your chairs if possible. And if you have any other needs, please let us know so that we can provide for them as we gather to worship on October the 18th outside. We continue to provide virtual worship each week and we invite you to continue to come and be a part of this virtual worshiping community, particularly if you are uncomfortable with in-person worship. We will be continuing our ministries through the soup cellar and their expressed need now is bottled water. If you have an opportunity, we would like for you to bring bottled water to help us with our ministry to the soup cellar. You can bring that to the church at any time, or you can bring it to the service on October the 18th. Also, we will very soon be planning our next Sunday dinner on the grounds. It will be an opportunity for us to continue our ministry of reaching out to those who are experiencing poverty, want, need, or homelessness. We ask you to support this ministry by providing blankets, and bottled drinks. If you are willing to help us in any way by volunteering on that day, please let us know. We will have our volunteer link up very soon. We are very aware that during this time of pandemic, it is easy to become isolated from others. So we're continuing these virtual worship experiences and providing opportunities for you to attend Sunday school classes, Bible studies, and to connect with us through church chats. We hope that you will very soon join us in these means as well. Again, we do welcome you to our service, and I invite you now to worship the Lord.
And now, if you would join me in the opening prayer. Holy God, you are light, and in you there is no darkness at all. As we gather to worship, shift our focus from whatever is false to that which is true, from whatever is vulgar to that which is honorable, from whatever is corrupt to that which is just, from whatever is inauthentic to that which is pure, from whatever is detestable to that which is pleasing, from whatever is insignificant to that which is commendable, that we may live in the light. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Our lesson today comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord. In this way, dear friends, I plead with Yodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, excuse me, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes, to understand a passage of Scripture, one must read the transition phrase or phrases just before it. Paul wrote in Philippians 3, 20, 21, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Paul has drawn for them an image of where they currently are in their faith journey. They are in it to win it. In fact, they have already won the prize. They are on their way to being with Jesus. They are already citizens of heaven. They are simply in that time between times that time between what is now and what will be. He's just coached them to press on towards that heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And now he is continuing his work of coaching them on how to live in this time while we are waiting. While we are waiting, he tells them, get focused Stand firm. We all know that it is in those moments while we are waiting that we are most likely to lose our nerve, our confidence, and our focus. Every person who has ever sung in a choir, performed in a band or an orchestra, 
if you've ever participated in a team sport, if you've ever been on the stage in a play, you know that it's in those moments just before, while you're waiting, while you're waiting, that your knees go weak and your stomach begins to churn. It's in those moments while we're waiting that you have to get your head on straight. You have to get ready and get focused. It's in those moments that you have to remember all of those practices. And in all those moments, we must recall the times when we were taught, coached, and what we were, have learned. Paul coached the church that in this time, while we are waiting, we must get focused. We must stand firm in that which you've been taught and that which you have learned about living in Christ as we have lived together in community. You have to stand firm in what you believe. He coached them, get focused. Stand firm. And then Paul told them, get your head on straight. Some people accuse preachers of going from preaching to meddling. If you're old enough, you've heard that expression. Well, if you will, in this particular section, Paul goes from preaching and coaching to real meddling. He begins to talk to this church about what's really happening within their community of faith. Now, we don't know the specifics, but it is apparent that Yodia and Syntyche are not getting along very well. There's been some breach in their relationship. And Paul calls them out. And he coaches them directly. Be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, everyone who was listening would have thought, I've heard those words. Because just two chapters before, Paul coached the church saying, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. They might have piqued your interest as well. Because most of us are familiar with the Philippian hymn, the second chapter of Philippians, where in verses 5 through 11, Jesus is described as one who chose not to use his equality with God to his own advantage. He's described as one who, even though he is equal with God, chose to become a servant. It describes how he humbled himself, even though he was equal with God, and became obedient, even to death on a cross. Paul coached these women, don't be like the world, be like Jesus. And then he addressed the leader of the church, and through the leader, the entire community, and coach them to help these women to move from discord to accord. Ouch. And double ouch. Most of us are good Southerners, or we have learned the ways of the South. We often find it difficult to speak the truth to one another and love. I know that I do. Sometimes it's hard for us to say, I feel hurt by what you said. Or to say, I'm sorry. Or even to say, I disagree. Especially if you love someone, it's hard to say, I disagree or your words hurt my feelings. 
If we speak the truth in love, as Paul coached the church in Ephesus, however, we should be less afraid because in that context, everyone is permitted to share their thoughts and their feelings in a way that in which they can expect to be respected and honored and loved through Christ Jesus. The problem is that when we don't speak the truth in love to one another, hurt becomes anger. And unexpressed anger becomes destructive. It can literally destroy relationships. It shows up sometimes in passive aggressive behaviors. Sometimes it shows up in people simply withdrawing from the conversation or from the life of faith. Sometimes unexpressed disagreement or even a disagreement expressed without love forms us into camps. The Marys against the Marthas, the Dons against the Bills, the right against the left, the conservative against the liberal. Paul coaches these women and the entire church to work together in harmony while we are waiting for the final transformation of Christ. We're all on the same journey, practicing our faith, and laboring to be more like Jesus. The truth is that we all fail every day, sometimes in small ways that hurts no one but ourselves, sometimes in ways that hurt others, sometimes in ways that hurt our community of faith. We don't need to be Southern about it. We need to listen to our coach. Paul wrote, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Then Paul coached the church to change your perspective. While we're waiting, we cannot focus on the challenges of the journey. We must focus on our destination. Where we are going is so much better than where we have been or where we are right now. We are going to be with the Lord. Therefore, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. We have an assurance as citizens of heaven that many people in this world do not know. Some people are just lost. Their joy, their happiness, their peace are tangled up in ego, in power. Somehow it's tangled up in how much they can earn more than how much they can serve. Some people are lost, absolutely lost in swamps of self-destruction and self-degradation. Darkness surrounds their hearts and their minds, and they cannot see the light of Christ. They cannot experience deeply the hope and the joy of faith. They have not experienced what it means to be in relationship with God, to be a part of God's story that is reconciling, renewing, and life-giving. They have not known the light of Jesus 
that comes into our lives and shines on our life as a guide through our darkest days. They've not experienced the comfort of knowing a God who understands what it means to be human because God was fully human in Jesus. God understands what this journey is like. The challenges, the hurts, the failures, the weak knees, the churning stomachs, the broken relationships, all of that that can come to us in these days while we are waiting. So many people have not come to know this Christ. This Christ who will shine His light upon their lives and show them the way to hope and to joy, to meaning and to purpose. Paul coached the church at Philippi, you're not lost. You know where you're going. You know who you are. You are citizens of heaven and you are going to be with Jesus, the one who lives and reigns with God. He coached them. Stand firm. Get your head on straight. Change your perspective. Rejoice in the Lord. Now Paul was not preaching a Pollyanna faith to them. Paul himself knew the challenges of this journey. And more than once in his writings, he enumerated them for his readers. He had been beaten. He had been betrayed. He had been stoned, arrested, and put in chains. He coached the church to practice their very best behavior. Pray. Pray. Too often we worry before we pray. Paul coached them to pray about everything. He reminded the church that there is absolutely nothing in our lives that cannot be shared with God through prayer. And then he reminded them that prayer is our best behavior for this time while we are waiting. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Pray. And then he coached the people at Philippi to mind their minds. I once heard a counselor speak to a group about the messages that are always playing in our minds. She said, we all know what those messages really are. They're the things you've learned through your life and heard from significant people along the way. Some of those messages are positive and some of them are negative. Using the analogy of controlling a pre-recorded message, she talked about how everyone needed the ability to hit the pause button, to stop the message so that they could evaluate it and determine, is this a message I need to delete or is this a message I need to play over and over again? Paul coached the church, mind your mind. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. While we are waiting, don't fill your mind with negativity. Don't think the worst about yourself or about others. Fill your mind with the messages of God's love for you and for the world. Don't let your mind be overwhelmed by the evil that you see or experience along the journey. But think of all the places where you observe the goodness of God 
And you bear witness to the beauty of this life we share together. The kindness, the generosity, the laughter, the joyful times we share serving one another in compassion, reaching out to our community with love. Fill your mind with music, with the sacred text in scripture and in song. Mind your mind so that your internal messages refresh you and nourish you in joy, in hope, and in faith. While we are waiting, Paul coaches the church, get focused, stand firm, get your head on straight, be of the same mind in the Lord, change your perspective, rejoice in the Lord, practice your best behavior, pray, mind your mind. Think about the right things. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? God's promise for the journey. Your hearts and your minds will be guarded by the peace of of God and the God of peace will be with you. Amen and amen. And now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, we come before you today full of cares and concerns and beset by uncertainty. Lord, see us in our need and give us your peace that passes all understanding. For those who mourn, give your comfort. For those who are sick, give your healing. For those who are suffering job loss and financial insecurity, provide opportunities, resources, and direction. For those in leadership positions, give your wisdom, discernment, and humility. Lord, we thank you for your love and care for all people and the beauty of this world you created. Thank you for this beautiful fall weather and the changing of the seasons. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, 
Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Beloved, may the Spirit guide us to that which is true, that we may be set free, that which is honorable, that we may rise above ourselves, that which is just, that we may stand in the breach for another, that which is pure, that we may live with integrity, that which is pleasing, that we may look beyond ourselves, that which is commendable, that we may seek to do God's will, that which is excellent and worthy of praise, that we may praise the name of the Lord forever. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.